This professor has a very special ability. He can calculate a million possibilities for anything in advance. The professor assembled a team of misfits, all geniuses, sees cross-border treasury between South and North Korea, where it is possible to print a trillion dong in just one week. The professor wants to steal a trillion at once. The whole team prepares weapons and wears masks. They rush to the money printing factory on a bus. At this time, there is a police convoy escorting a container truck. They bring paper to the money printing factory. The route involves crossing a dam, suddenly blocked by steel pillar. The robbers are using ropes to climb up. First, the hacker disables the police communication devices. From the bus, masked figures appear, continuously firing warning shots to intimidate. The group sequentially disables each police officer. Police surrender seeing their professionalism. By the professor's order, the gang will not kill anyone. They switch to police uniforms for disguise. As they reach the security gate of the factory, hacker infiltrates system from container, successfully legalizing their identities as the driver and crew. After verifying all the information matches, the guards allow the group to enter inside. At the same time, two female members also enter the factory. They carry a large bag. Guards discover guns inside. The girl quickly uses her gun to control the situation, then fires into the air to intimidate. From the container, masked members also step out. They spread out everywhere, firing guns to threaten, quickly gaining full control of the money printing factory. They quickly gather 50 hostages in one place, while the hacker takes over the control center and camera room. Here, the robbers find a very important girl. She is the daughter of a member of parliament visiting here. The gang blindfolds the hostages and gathers them together. Everything goes smoothly as calculated by the professor. At this point, Dong Su steps forward and says, Money belongs to the state, life belongs to you. It's best to keep your lives. The gang proceeds to confiscate all phones, and all the hostages behave extremely obediently. Simultaneously, two individuals with the hacker breach the money vault. An elderly master thief with extraordinary skills, successfully unlocking the high-security vaults of nations. They eagerly dive into the pile of money to enjoy. But this pile of money is only over 2,000 trillion. To reach 1 trillion, they'll need a week to print it. To extend the time without arousing suspicion, the professor calculated a million potential outcomes. He orders four people to take the money outside, pretending to engage in a gunfight with the police. They stage a scene, feigning escape but encircled by police, so they have no choice but to retreat inside. Police mobilize, exchanging fire with the group. Feeling that enough was enough, one person threw a smoke bomb, then retreats inside and closes the door. Of course, they were wearing bulletproof vests so they were unharmed. Emergency meetings convened by South and North Korea governments. They believed that the robbers intended to escape but were held up inside. Inside factory, the professor initiates step two. They distribute a set of red clothing to all the hostages, identical to what they are wearing. Police can't identify hostages amid chaos. Simultaneously, hacker establishes covert communication link, enabling professor to command remotely. At this point, Taehee, South Korea's top negotiator, arrives, while North Korea sends a captain to coordinate. The North Korean captain wants to storm in immediately, regardless of the hostages' status, but Taehee prioritizes the safety of everyone. She calls inside to negotiate with the robbers. But in reality, the hacker has connected her to the professor outside. Of course, the professor uses voice-changing software. Taehee requests the release of the high school students first. The professor impersonates concern, saying they will consider it. He purposely mentions three people to confuse police, then immediately cut the call. Upon hearing only three individuals, chief commander urges immediate attack. Despite Taehee's caution, sensing a possible trap, the chief commander ignores her. Orders Taehee to return home without negotiation. Outside, Taehee gets text from lover, setting up meeting. She drives to her lover's coffee shop. To her surprise, Taehee's boyfriend is the professor. The professor had calculated that Taehee is the best negotiator, so he ensured South Korea would send her to negotiate. Thus, the professor had actively courted her months before. The lovers begin chatting happily. The professor knows North Korea will attack the factory. He quickly texts the commando team. Sure enough, at this moment, Captain Choi is mobilizing the commandos. The hacker observes the door they are approaching. The gang promptly guides hostages toward commando preparation area. The police drill a small hole to insert a camera for observation. They are surprised to see so many people wearing red clothing. 
all of them are wearing masks and holding guns. Meanwhile, two hostages are live-streaming the situation. All the robbers are dressed alike. The commander receives the notification. The girl streaming on YouTube is the daughter of the US ambassador. Captain Choi immediately orders a retreat. Then Dong Su instructs the hostages to remove their masks. A brilliant move by the professor. While Taehee talks with the professor, she gets a call. She needs to return to the negotiation site. When Taehee left, the professor quickly returned to work. He orders his team to proceed to the next step. That is to start the money printing machine. Everyone starts printing money together. Increasing printing capacity to the maximum. Professor tells Dongsu to manage the hostages well. And orders the hostages to dig a tunnel. Taehee returns to the base. After last night's successful prediction, everyone listens to her now. Taehee warns controlling 50 hostages is extremely tough. There will surely be hostages who manage to escape. We have to patiently wait for them to report back. The bearded man is directing the group of hostages to dig the tunnel. Intentionally saying it's their escape route. Taking advantage when father and son speak privately outside. The director of the mint tells his staff. They must inform police about robbers printing money. A brave person agrees to pretend to be injured. Waiting for the bearded man's distraction. The director sneaks out through the back door. As the director, he knows the layout of the mint well. Quickly making it to a hiding spot. Just as he's about to escape, Se Young catches him. Director pretends to search for first aid for injured employee. Feeling the hostages unrest, Dong Su gathers them all. He orders North Korean hostages to stand on the right, while the South Koreans stand on the left. From this point on, the person on either side who makes a mistake will not be allowed to eat or go to the bathroom. So you all have to monitor each other. But during dinner, the director calls his secretary into his office. There's a smartwatch in the drawer. Used to notify police about money printing. Seeing the secretary looking nervous, he promises to divorce his wife and marry her once they're out, which raises suspicions, prompting the ponytailed man to inquire. The director claims she's pregnant. Thinking she was really pregnant, ponytailed man allows her to stay with US ambassador's daughter. Here, the two plan to retrieve the smartwatch. The schoolgirl pretends to need the restroom, so the hacker leads her, allowing the secretary to stay behind. Seizing opportunity, secretary sneaks off to find smartwatch. In the bathroom, the schoolgirl tried to buy time, directly kissing the hacker affectionately. Meanwhile, the secretary retrieves the smartwatch. Outside, the special ops team receives the signal. Before the girl send the message, the ponytailed man enters. She had to say she was looking for food. The ponytailed man handed her food. Think she's pregnant is true. Secretary plans to activate smartwatch, but ponytailed man returns. Grabbing her hand, asking if that jerk hit her. The secretary revealed he was already married. After speaking, the ponytailed man led her away. Outside, Taehee panicked when she lost signal from the smartwatch. Afraid the keeper of the watch was eliminated. So she called the gang to inquire. The professor said no one could contact the outside. Taehee knew the gang still didn't know about the smartwatch. The subordinate said they would send a link to the smartwatch. If the captive clicked on it, we could observe what's happening inside. Ponytailed man leads secretary to director for reprimand. How dare you impregnate her when you're already married? Secretary pretends to intervene, slips watch into director's pocket. The professor contemplated the negotiator's words. Her words were very confident. There must be something unusual. The professor immediately texted to invite her for dinner. Since it was Taehee's break time and she was hungry. Seeing her lover's message, she agreed immediately. She goes to professor's house for meal he prepared, inadvertently mentioning near resolution of case. The professor was startled to hear this. At this moment, Taehee received a call, so the professor went inside to eavesdrop. She talked about the watch with her colleagues. While talking, she glances at mirror, sees lover eavesdropping. When the professor came out, Taehee interrogates lover for eavesdropping. Still intending to arrest him, the professor quickly came up with a story. He suspected she had someone else, hence the eavesdropping. I really cherish our relationship. Taehee saw reason and immediately apologized. She promised to only date him. When Taehee left, the professor breathed a sigh of relief. He called Dongsu to report that someone was holding the smartwatch. They were about to disclose money printing to police. Dongsu hurriedly gathered all the captives together. While he was threatening to kill whoever had the watch, the director behind the secretary turned on the smartwatch then clicked on the link the police sent. 
Now the police outside were connected. Dong Su called the man to step forward. He quickly handed the watch to the secretary and stepped forward. Dong Su gave the man a metal detector. Find the person holding the watch. The secretary feared for her safety and hid the watch. The man scanned each person in reverse. Approaching secretary, he scans intentionally from afar. Dong Su grabs his hand, forces him to rescan closer. Soon the warning bell rang out. Dong Su tore the secretary's shirt and found the transmission wire. Unexpectedly, when I turned my back, the smartwatch fell out. Dong Su, enraged, smashed the smartwatch to pieces. The police inside thus lost the signal. Inside, Dong Su ordered the execution of the secretary in anger. The other members protested because the professor ordered them not to kill anyone. But Dong Su remained firm. He drew his gun, saying it needed to be done to set an example. The ponytail guy claimed she was pregnant. Dong Su whispered, you believe that nonsense. Then he handed the ponytail guy a gun to execute her. The ponytail guy dragged the secretary away amidst everyone's horror. Seeing this, the professor asked them to stop. Dong Su orders to ignore, no one picks up call. Outside, the ponytail guy prepared to execute the other secretary. He asked why she lied about being pregnant. She sat down on the ground in fear. The ponytail guy apologized and then fired the gun. The hostages, hearing the gunshot, were terrified. Dong Su threatened them to take it as a lesson. Any disobedience would result in being shot. Dong Su then went to check, seeing the secretary lying on the floor. He cautiously stepped on her hand to check if she was dead or not. Then he ordered the ponytail guy to clean up. Se Young was upset and wanted to call the professor, but Dong Su intervened. He said the plan almost failed because of the smartwatch. This is done to prevent hostages from rebelling. I'll inform the professor myself when the plan ends. Se Young wanted to rebel and pull out her gun, but the two big guys were on Dong Su's side, so she had no choice but to leave. Se Young discovers that the secretary is still alive. Turns out, he was kind hearted. He only shot her in the thigh earlier to fake her death. Se Young suggested they should keep this a secret. She bandages wound and administers antibiotics to secretary. Se Young tells the ponytail guy that Dong Su intends to kill her. Now we have to remove him from his position of authority. When Taehee saw a bit of video from the smartwatch's recording, they saw the hacker's face. Taehee immediately requested a recheck of all the surveillance tapes, because burglars would always scout there beforehand. Indeed, they found the hacker had visited along with another woman. Taehee ordered a trace of everyone these two had met. They can identify the gang members. The ponytail guy's father was digging a tunnel. Actually, this tunnel is real. While the tunnel the hostages were digging is fake. Just to deceive the police. At dinner. When Se Young went outside, Dong Su signaled his men to follow her. Just as the big guy was about to discover the secretary's room, the ponytail guy appeared in time to attack him. After a tough struggle with the big guy, the ponytail guy finally subdued him. At this moment, the bald guy was on patrol. Accidentally found the room with the secretary. Just as he noticed, Se Young had her gun aimed at him. Then she pointed her gun at Dong Su. Now, there's turmoil within the gang. They attempt calling the professor, but he's out and doesn't answer. It turns out the professor was driving directly to the mint, activating the alarm of his car to attract the police, seizing the opportunity to sneak inside. Inside, the police had identified the hacker and a girl. Taehee suggested bringing his parents to help negotiate. Just as the professor entered the command center, he gave the phone to Taehee with the excuse that her daughter was missing. Using this opportunity to probe what the police knew, it turns out his mother called because Taehee's ex-husband took away their daughter. Taehee immediately called her ex-husband to scold him. Due to custody dispute, he's forbidden from seeing their daughter. Taehee demands he bring their daughter back immediately. Taehee coldly invited the professor to leave. Because this is a security agency, and he can't stay. But the professor got what he wanted. Because earlier in the control room, he quickly spotted a picture of his two teammates. Inside, Se Young said Dong Su disobeyed the professor's orders. So the command here will be revoked. Dong Su says everyone needs to vote. But unexpectedly, more people wanted to oust him. The professor came home to see his group in turmoil. He immediately called inside to inquire about the situation. Dong Su said he killed a hostage, and Se Young wants to overthrow him. The professor was very angry because someone disobeyed his orders. Simultaneously, professor informs them police have hacker's identity. All thanks to the smartwatch capturing his face. The internal situation became worse. Now, the cross-eyed girl turned her gun towards Se Young. 
Believing that Dong Su's warning to the hostage was justified, the hacker panicked, afraid his parents would find out he was a robber. The situation gets worse when the father learns that his son killed the secretary. He had always wanted his son to be virtuous, not to end up in jail because of this. He came up with the idea to stop all of this, which was to open the door and take the blame for his son. Thinking this, he indeed opened the door, and he walked out alone, the ponytail guy ran after. Taehee immediately ordered special forces to advance. The man put on the mask and rushed to push his father down. He told his father to cover his face, explaining that he hadn't killed the hostage. But now, how could they get inside? Because by now, the special forces had surrounded them. Furthermore, Taehee recognized the other two as robbers, and the captain ordered the snipers to take aim. In this difficult situation, Dong Su showed leadership skills, gathering some hostages to move towards the exit. Outside, Taehee declared she knew the two were robbers, and Captain Choi ordered the military to advance. Unexpectedly, at this moment, many masked individuals advanced, causing immediate chaos among the police, not knowing who were hostages and who were robbers. The hostages surrounded. One masked person shielded the bearded man. Unfortunately, while moving inside, the two robbers began to argue, resulting in dropping their guns. The director then picked up a gun and aimed it at everyone. The hostages and the robbers reluctantly surrendered, which led the police to misunderstand him as a robber. The captain and Tay he order his immediate shooting. She orders snipers to shoot down director immediately. Only then do police realize the shot one is meant director. Taking advantage of the police's confusion, the group of robbers quickly pulled the hostages inside, hurriedly providing first aid to the director. With such a severe injury, their only option was to call in a doctor. And the police control room was now in complete chaos. If the director had any connections, they were in trouble. Taehee called the professor requesting permission for medical assistance. As the professor's plan didn't involve casualties, so he agreed to let the police bring in the doctor. Captain Choi went out requesting to join the medical team. Taehee saw this as a golden opportunity to control the gang. During the rescue, the gang would have to post guards, seizing the opportunity for the police to infiltrate, while wearing similar attire to the robbers. Captain Choi was equipped with glasses with a camera, allowing the police to observe inside the mint, quickly entering with the doctor. The professor, monitoring from home, immediately recognized the captain. Having seen him earlier in the command post, Professor promptly informs Dong Su Man with glasses as police officer. Simultaneously, special forces team disguised as robbers break in through the ventilation duct. The medical team also entered inside. The police observed everything along the way. Captain Choi turned around to record. The medical team began surgery on the director, but Captain Choi hesitated because he wasn't a doctor. Dong Su approached, pointing his gun at Captain Choi demanding he perform the surgery on the director. Captain Choi realizes he'd be exposed, so he had no choice but to admit he was a cop, claiming he was only there to ensure the safety of the medical team, with no ulterior motive. Dong Su found this plausible and allowed the doctor to proceed. On this side, the secretary also needed urgent surgery, delaying it could cost her life, and Ponytail managed to steal a surgical knife. The police team managed to infiltrate through the ventilation ducts. Meanwhile, the professor was monitoring the operating room, but he felt something was amiss. With honed deductive skills, he quickly noticed something unusual about Captain Choi's glasses. Realize what's different about these glasses. Perhaps they were transmitting video outside, which most likely meant a diversionary tactic, misleading robbers, allowing another team to infiltrate. The professor's deduction was spot on. At this moment, police team infiltrates successfully. The professor immediately devised a perfect counter plan. With the surgical team finished and leaving, when Captain Choi went out, he was surprised, as the robbers had changed all their masks. This was precisely the calculated move in the professor's plan. Taehee quickly called the police team to withdraw. Captain Choi also rushed outside and announced a ceasefire. Thus, once again, this gang won over Taehee's strategies. It turned out that the professor had planned with his team beforehand, anticipating that the police would use Trojan horse tactics, so they needed additional masks to avoid police infiltration. Everything was within the professor's calculations. The center never expected the professor to be this skilled, but they couldn't have imagined that. The police's conversations were all heard by the professor, because the hacker had installed a spying code in Captain Choi's phone. 
The ponytail side was preparing surgery for the secretary. Surprisingly, Dong Su aimed his gun after discovering. Seeing the secretary still alive, Dong Su wanted to kill her. If the hostages found out, they wouldn't be afraid anymore. Dong Su insisted on shooting to stop the ponytail side. The cross-eyed girl pointed her gun at Dong Su. They forced everyone to save the secretary. At this moment, she had a seizure. The hacker used to be a doctor, he easily took the bullet out of the secretary's body. Moments later, the secretary woke up to see the ponytail. During their time together, they developed feelings for each other. Seeing the secretary alive through the camera, the professor was very pleased, immediately declaring that Se Young would take over as the leader. While Dong Su was temporarily blinded and confined to a room, outside, the media began to condemn Tae He for ordering the mistaken shooting of a hostage, putting immense pressure on Tae He. This was also part of the professor's calculations. He proactively approached her committee. The two rushed to bite each other. Inside the printing factory, there was still a police officer. It turns out this officer did not withdraw earlier, but accepted to stay behind, pretending to be a hostage. He quickly blended in with the other hostages. Captain Choi at this point met with a North Korean leader. The leader said our plans have all been leaked by the thieves. It's very possible that Tae he leaked the information. Because the economic conference between the two Koreas is about to take place, the leader ordered. Even if all the hostages die, this case must end. So the colonel went outside to gather North Korean forces. They secretly execute the plan without letting South Korea know. The objective is to find and kill the professor. Without him, the thieves are like headless snakes. Inside the factory, the policeman met with the schoolgirl and the director. They aimed to capture a robber to identify the mastermind. The director suggested bringing the ponytail guy. He was jealous because the two were in love. The secretary was heartbroken but agreed. She asked someone to deliver a note to the warehouse. The ponytail guy joyfully advanced into the warehouse, but was suddenly beaten unconscious by the police. The director tortured him to reveal the mastermind's identity, but he refused to confess anything. The foolish director made a guess. The mastermind must be Say Young. I saw him raise his hand to greet her. The subordinate reported they found out the mastermind is Say Young. The colonel ordered to eliminate her. Meanwhile, they prepared armed forces to attack. The police officer pressed the disturbance button. The gang immediately became chaotic. At the same time, the police activated tear gas, activate the fire alarm system. The director was beating the ponytail guy in anger. The secretary rushed to intervene. The director is angry because his secretary no longer loves him. Forced the secretary to resort to holding a gun. The ponytail guy pulled out a leg to assist. The two took down the director and then untied each other. The chaotic situation made Se Young unsure of what to do. She ordered all the hostages to gather in one place. Then she went with the bald man to find the cause. But smoke was everywhere. This was the perfect time for the police officer to strike. The hacker found Dong Su convulsing on the ground. He unties Dong Su. The result was Dong Su choking him until he lost consciousness. Meanwhile, as the police officer prepares to shoot Se Young, but seeing how beautiful she was, he hesitated. But Dong Su appeared just in time to rescue her. He reminds her to be more careful. The professor made a phone call to the printing factory. Se Young suggested bringing Dong Su back as the leader, because only he had the courage to lead in times of crisis. Dong Su agreed without holding a grudge against anyone. At this moment, Tae He negotiated with the professor. After yesterday's incident, she felt the public pressure. Public opinion demanded immediate armed repression. I need to confirm if the hostages are safe, then we won't launch an armed attack. This was part of the professor's calculations, so he agreed. The professor then said, Tomorrow is a very important day, everyone should prepare carefully. Don Su later made an announcement to the hostages. Tomorrow, the police will come here to confirm your safety. Your families want to see you healthy and safe. The director then cleverly discussed with the two. He told the schoolgirl to pass a note to the police. If they get caught, they won't dare to kill a schoolgirl. After all, you are the daughter of the US ambassador. The girl wrote the message on the bill. They killed the police officer and are printing money. The national television is broadcasting the live confirmation of the hostages. Dong Su does not wear a mask as he steps forward to greet them. One by one, each person is brought out to confirm their safety. It's the turn of the shul girl. She pretends to cry for Tae He's comfort. The schoolgirl intends to return the bill but is stopped by Se Young. Then the schoolgirl is taken inside and the bill is revealed. But no one notices.
Dong Su leads all the hostages out in front of the public. Taehee holds a list to check off each person. After a while, a female voice says the police officer is missing. Dong Su denies the presence of any hostage. She asks everyone. The purpose is to expose the fact that the gang has killed someone in front of the public. Taehee approaches the schoolgirl. As the schoolgirl is about to speak, Sae Young covers her mouth. Taehee then accuses them of killing him. The public is outraged by this. It seemed Taehee had successfully manipulated public opinion. But it turns out it was all part of the professor's plan. At this moment, a masked figure is brought in. When the mask is removed, it turns out to be the police officer. Because Dong Su shot him yesterday. But he was wearing a bulletproof vest so he's fine. The professor exploits this to gain public support. A video screen shows the police officer breaking into the printing facility, causing chaos to kill the gang's leader. Dong Su says if we hadn't intervened in time, the police would have stormed in, causing many hostages to die. The police don't care about the safety of the hostages. The families of the hostages outside are extremely angry. Dong Su seizes the opportunity to declare on the media, we may be robbers but we still protect human lives. But the police only care about protecting money and don't care about you. Taehee steps out in defeat. Now she must face tremendous pressure. From both public opinion and her superiors. Taehee suggests going outside for a walk with the professor. The professor saw that she was having difficulty so he advised her to quit her job. Taehee is moved and hugs the professor. The professor also quickly feels guilty towards her. Taehee accidentally finds a piece of money. It turns out the schoolgirl put it in her pocket yesterday. Taehee immediately realizes the gang is printing money inside. Meanwhile, Colonel Choi directly goes to the professor's house. He suspects him because he visited the special forces office yesterday. Colonel then pretends to go to the bathroom. Quickly, he finds the hidden room. At this moment, the professor also appears here. Colonel Choi quickly grabs a paper cutter. Then he bids farewell to the professor and leaves. In the car, he calls his men to test for fingerprints. The professor also overhears the phone call and learns that the colonel has taken a paper cutter from him. If he finds his fingerprints, it's over. At this time, the presidential candidate meets with Tycoon Han. Tycoon Han says the robbers are printing trillions to steal. We need this money for the presidential campaign. So let's arrest the robbers. The candidate asks about the daughter of the US ambassador. Tycoon Han says then kill her before attacking. The presidential candidate calls one of the robbers. Sure enough, while the schoolgirl is sitting there, someone throws a note. It says, go to the basement, I'll help you escape. Meanwhile, Taehee found a crucial detail. The upcoming summit conference will decide to print trillions of currency. With the goal of developing the common economy of the two countries, Taehee comes to meet her ex-husband who is now a presidential candidate. She asks if the upcoming summit will secretly print trillions of currency, and whether you embezzled that money. The man asks why she doesn't use force to suppress them. Is it because of the US ambassador's daughter that she hesitates to act? His words make Tae he realize. Are they going to kill the girl to raid? Tae he immediately calls the professor. She reports that there's a traitor in the gang. And he's plotting to kill the schoolgirl. The gang members hear this and scatter to find the girl, but they can't find her anywhere. The schoolgirl follows the note and goes to the basement. The hacker checks the camera and discovers that someone planted a bomb under the basement 10 minutes ago. Say Young and the hacker immediately rush to the basement. Meanwhile, the girl reaches the meeting point, completely unaware of the bomb here. Just as the other two rush there, the bomb explodes. Everyone is terrified by the explosion. But surprisingly, the schoolgirl emerges unscathed. The group convenes to identify the traitor. Now, suspicions are cast on each other. Outside, Taehee proposes a bold move. That is to cut off all power here to stop the robbers from printing more money. Because the professor fears that Colonel Choi will uncover his identity, he had the hacker sabotage him. The police discovered that Colonel Choi's phone was in contact with the robbers. The police suspect the colonel is one of the robbers. Meanwhile, the colonel is waiting for the fingerprint results on the knife. Suddenly, a team of inspectors arrives to arrest him. The colonel, with exceptional martial arts skills, quickly fights back, easily subduing a police officer and escaping before intentionally rushing into the room to check the results. Upon opening it, he discovers that the mastermind is the professor. Upon arriving outside, the colonel calls Taehee. The professor is actually her boyfriend. But Taehee doesn't receive the message as the hacker has intercepted it. The colonel goes to Taehee's house to meet her. 
Unexpectedly, the professor is already there. The colonel skillfully fights back. Unfortunately, he gets injected with a tranquilizer. The professor carries the colonel to the car but is spotted by Tehi's mother. He decides to eliminate her and enters the house with a gun. But upon realizing that she's under the influence of sedatives, he leaves. Inside the factory, suspicions about the spy are still high. Dong Su insists that the hacker betrayed the group, because only hackers have their identities discovered by the police. Of course, the hacker claims it's someone else. This results in everyone pointing guns at each other. The bald-headed man brings water to the detained group. As he kneels down to serve, he's about to be attacked by the police officer. Meanwhile, Taehee orders to cut off the power supply to the entire factory. When the power goes out, the bald man also gets hit. The professor loses all contact with his team. The hostages overpower the bald man, seize his gun, and flee. The police officer gathers all 50 hostages. He says, I'll personally lead everyone out. But on the way, they're spotted by the bald man. The police officer immediately subdues him. The hostages flee frantically. Despite nearly passing out, the bald man tries to alert his comrades. Now the robbers know that all the hostages have escaped. Young activates the backup power at the control station. When the lights come on, they seize the bald man lying unconscious. The professor, using his predictive abilities. He informs the hostages that they'll escape through the rear door. Sure enough, everyone heads in that direction. But upon reaching the door, they freeze in shock. It's been locked with a laser beam. Someone pushes a cart towards it, only to be stopped by the ponytailed man. At this moment, Dong Su and his team arrive. And the chaotic situation is brought under control. The hacker reports that things are under control. Unexpectedly, the police arrive suddenly. He forced the hacker to connect with the police outside. The undercover agent requests police support. Taehee immediately orders the special forces to attack. Veen can sat to Fa Hui Mwa Ken Lin Lak Kwa Jiao Su. He takes Don Su's rare medicine shell and leaves. The police also begin to break down the door of the robbers. The robbers group and the police engage in continuous gunfights. The gang was unprepared. So their ammunition is not plentiful and the gunfight gradually diminishes with each shot, as the group runs low on bullets and faces danger. On the rooftop, Seiyun uses a machine gun to attack, forcing the police to retreat. Seeing the intense gunfight, the police signal for all hostages to go up to the rooftop. Taehee ordered to bring rescue mattresses for the hostages to jump off. Dong Su has managed to push the police outside, but upon returning, he finds no hostages. Outside, everyone has reached the rooftop. Everyone prepares to jump down. The ponytailed man catches up with the secretary. But because he's fallen in love, he urges her to run away quickly. The priority order for jumping is women. But the director insists on going first. As he rushes, his belt gets stuck. Leaving him dangling on the wall unable to descend. Everyone risked their lives to jump down. This allows many of them to escape safely. At this moment, Dong Su arrives to break the door. Seeing the daughter of the ambassador about to jump. Dong Su takes a risk and jumps after her, managing to catch her. The others strain to pull all them up. Thus, 25 hostages have been safely rescued. Because all communication devices were destroyed. The professor couldn't contact his team either. The robbers are now like a headless snake. Moreover, the bearded man now is dead. Each member is crying in sorrow. The teammates proceed to preserve his body. Se Young informs all the remaining hostages. If anything else happens, there will be no mercy. But the hostages now all have an attitude of defiance. They even mockingly applaud the robbers. The robbers don't know what to do next. Dong Su is trembling because all his drugs have been shattered. People start arguing again about who the traitor is, pushing them into such dire straits. Dong Su then collapses to the ground and begins to convulse. It turns out the spy is the cross-eyed girl. Because the candidate has kidnapped her children to control her, the gang is now facing the risk of collapse, but it's still within the professor's predictions. It turns out the professor still has a backup team. The second team is now needed. They also hold the colonel here. The professor ordered the group to go on a mission. The policeman gave Taehee a bottle of medicine that the robber was using. This is medicine for an extremely rare condition. Even in Korea, there are only a few patients. Taehee orders to find those who buy this medicine. Dong Su is also lying unconscious due to lack of medicine. The whole team doesn't know what to do. Everyone decides to quarantine Dong Su in a room. Se Young enters to inquire about his condition. 
Here, the two devise a clever way to identify the traitor. Dong Su holding a paper knife to Se Young's throat. Then he edges the knife towards Se Young's neck. He accuses Se Young of being the traitor. At this moment, the bald man appears. Se Young falsely claims that the hacker is the traitor. So the bald man punches the hacker. When they wake up, the hacker and Se Young are tied up. Everyone gathers around. Dong Su says one of these two is the traitor. I'll push one of them to the police to avenge. After saying that, Dong Su presses a button to open the door. Because he secretly loves Se Young, the hacker claims to be the traitor. But Dong Su coldly pushes the girl out. The police rush in to arrest Se Young. Meanwhile, Tae He receives a call from her subordinate. They've found the house of the buyer of that rare medicine. Tae He suspects it might be where the mastermind is hiding. I'll go there right now. Seo Yul is sitting in a nearby car. Inform the professor that Tae He is on her way. Tae He and a large number of police rush to that location. Completely unaware they've fallen into his trap. The professor is standing from afar, observing everything. Tae He finds a room. Surrounded by banners protesting the upcoming summit conference, on the walls are images of the attending officials, including pictures of the presidential candidate and Tae He herself. The police discover bombs planted everywhere here. They hurriedly evacuate outside. Of course, the professor doesn't want to harm anyone. Seo Yul informs the professor that Se Young has been arrested. But he says, I've anticipated Dong Su's intentions. It turns out the professor and Dong Su are brothers. They crossed the border to South Korea together when they were young. While swimming, they were spotted by the police. The professor's mother died here. That day, only the father and the professor survived. Dong Su was captured by North Korea. This time the brothers plan to rob the summit conference's money. It's also for revenge and to give the money to the people. Taehee proceeds to interrogate Se Young, but the stubborn girl refuses to confess anything. With no other options, they reluctantly escort she into a vehicle to leave. Little did they know, this was Se Young and Dong Su's secret plan. Because when Dong Su pushed Se Young out earlier, the girl with the crossed eyes falsely confessed to being the traitor. As the candidate had control over her two children, she had to obey. Se Young and Dong Su pretended to clash to expose her. Dong Su said, I'll pretend we have internal conflict. Pushing Se Young out was to send her to rescue her child. The professor will surely understand my intentions and send someone to rescue Se Young. Everyone agrees to forgive the girl with crossed eyes. The police are escorting Se Young to the detention center. Suddenly, a car blocks their path. Masked individuals appear, spraying black paint on the police car. They also plant bombs all over the car. The police notice the bombs are about to detonate and quickly surrender. Seo Yul unties Se Young and introduces herself. We are members of the professor's backup team. At the police command center, the candidate also appears. He announces he will take charge from now on. And he dismisses Tae Hee, his ex-wife, from duty. Tae Hee naturally complies with the order. The professor informs Se Young that the candidate has a secluded mansion. That's probably where he's holding the children's. At this mansion, the candidate has many guards stationed. The team carefully observes the number of guards. Then, wearing masks, they launch the attack. But they're only allowed to use fake bullets. Subduing but not killing the opponents. After a fierce battle, the backup team manages to defeat all the guards here. They successfully rescue the two children. But when carrying the child outside, they encounter Tae Hee. Since Se Young knows Tae Hee can be trusted, she hands the child over to her. Then the team boards the vehicle and leaves. At this moment, Dong Su brings the schoolgirl outside, demanding his former cellmate to come and talk directly. He is now a high ranking official. Dong Su declares, Today, I'll expose your dirty face. You're the one who killed hundreds of prisoners just for fun. The politician admits to these deeds but accuses Dong Su of sleeping with his daughter out of revenge. He tries to frame Dong Su to manipulate public opinion, but the professor is one step ahead. Now, a video is being broadcasted online, showing the group breaking into the congressman's house, was when rescuing the boy earlier. Next, a masked individual addresses the public, revealing that candidate Kim kidnapped a child. The person removes the mask, revealing herself as Seo Eun. Seo Eun says, I am the illegitimate child of the North Korean politician. He forced me when I was young. Every day in prison, he tortured and killed prisoners for fun. Knowing that Dong Su and I loved each other, he tried to kill us both. The person leading him to the upcoming deceitful conference is the presidential candidate. Dong Su says this conference is just a facade for them to print money. After the conference, 
trillions will flow into their pockets, money that should rightfully belong to the people. The media and public are outraged at the candidate and the North Korean politician. Inside, Dong Su tells the hacker, we have to get Se Young back, by releasing some hostages to cause chaos. He then informs all the hostages, I'll release some of you outside. If anyone chooses to stay to help us, they'll be rewarded 3 billion. The candidate and the North Korean politician discuss, they're trying to organize an attack on the money printing plant. Surprised to see the robbers live streaming, Dong Su declares that he'll release some hostages at 3 p.m. The candidate hurriedly calls the chief to cut the internet, but the chief says it's impossible to cut the national network. The tycoon declares, the summit must take place in three days. Both of them want to live, so they must capture the robbers before three days. The professor sees the news of the hostage release. Using his deductive ability, he immediately understands the intent. This is the chance to bring Se Young back. The professor instructs to inform the team to change plans. Otherwise, they won't be able to escape. Dong Su divides the hostages into two groups. Whoever stays to help the robbers will receive 3 billion won. Those who don't need money will be released this afternoon. The group of hostages staying inside is led back to continue tunneling. Taehee comes to see the professor. In a moment of emotion, she accidentally reveals her feelings for him. Then she leaves to go home. The professor chased after her and hugged her tightly. The professor has fallen in love with Taehee. Both of them then plan a trip together. The professor gives Taehee a picture of a certain city, saying they will go there to relax in their later years. Her father also suffers from memory loss like her mother. Unfortunately, he can't make it there. Both agree to go to this place, and it's time to release the hostages. The professor leads Se Young and the team to head to the money printing plant. Outside the factory, reporters are extremely crowded. The candidate orders all reporters to be removed from the scene. At the same time, all the police are mobilized to surround. While driving, suddenly, remembering the professor saying her father is like her mother, Taehee feels strange, because she never told that her mother suffers from memory loss. The professor is outside the money printing plant. He notices special forces surrounding them from all sides. At the same time, there are no civilians or reporters here. This situation is extremely dangerous for them. But at this point, Dong Su still decides to take a risk. He gathers the hostages in front of the door. He takes a deep breath and then opens the door. The hacker broadcasts live to limit police attacks. But unexpectedly, the nationwide internet is cut. This is a bold decision by the presidential candidate. Dong Su then releases some hostages outside. As the hostages run away in two lines ahead, Se Young drives a motorbike in the opposite direction. She accelerates to enter the money printing plant. Seo Yul also controls hundreds of fly cams to follow. The purpose is to disrupt the snipers. The situation at this point is chaotic. The robber group struggles to fight the snipers. Although they have successfully entered and closed the door, the whole team embraces each other joyfully. Se Young also administers emergency medicine to Dong Su, but no one knows that someone has been shot. He deliberately went to the restroom to hide because he didn't want anyone to be sad. Taehee goes home to ask her mother if she has ever met the professor. Her mother says she saw him here at night to arrest someone. But as she's speaking, her mother loses her memory again. Taehee tries to ask but gets nothing. She immediately went to the office, remembering that the professor always used her to gather information to help the robbers. Through investigation from Captain Choi, it turns out her lover is North Korean and also behind the robbers. Taehee cries when she realizes she's been manipulated by the professor. Captain Choi breaks his own hand to remove the handcuffs. When he rushes outside, he discovers this base has a lot of bombs, and there's a secret underground tunnel. He realizes the robbers want to escape through the tunnel. When the professor returned, they saw Captain Choi had escaped. The entire group chases after him onto the street. Although Captain Choi is injured, his martial arts skills are superb. Until at a crossroad when everyone surrounds him from all four directions. In a critical moment, he did some crazy things. Quickly bravely jumped straight into a car causing an accident. Crowds gathered to see Captain Choi's condition. The professor and his gang unable to do anything. Inside the printing factory, Se Young informs the whole group. The professor predicted that this conference would be held a day earlier. So we have to leave here tomorrow. The money has been printed so they have to speed up digging the tunnel. At this point, they have discovered someone injured. The situation is getting worse. Dong Su controls the secretary to go outside. He requests the medical team to come in and treat a teammate, but the candidate definitely disagrees. 
If they let the robbers shoot the hostage, he'll have more reason to attack. Dong Su had no choice but to go back inside. The situation becomes extremely dire as the tunnel is not yet dug, and the compromised support beam is on the verge of collapsing. People are arguing. Tailed Pony suggests handing the father over to the police for treatment, but he says he'd rather die than go to jail. Now the only way is to quickly dig the tunnel for everyone to escape. The professor orders someone to inject Captain Choi with a sedative, but everywhere is surrounded by police. The professor worries that if Captain Choi wakes up, the plan will fail. C.O. Yul suggests to the professor to continue to use Inspector Tae so that he can directly go to the hospital to inject him. Tae knowing she's being used by the professor, is deeply upset. She wants to catch the professor's gang in one sweep. The professor quickly receives her call. Tae pretends to ask him to take her to visit Captain Choi. The professor, unaware of being exposed, immediately agrees. He speeds off to pick up Tae Soon, the two are inside the hospital. The professor is unaware that undercover police have been following. Entering the hospital room, he sees Captain Choi lying unconscious. Tehi says Captain Choi is being pursued by the robbers. If he wakes up, he will reveal who they are. After saying this, Tehi pretends to leave to talk to the doctor. The professor stays behind, planning to eliminate Captain Choi. But before he can do so, Tehi returns. Tehi tells the professor. The doctor says it will take a few days for. Tehi then pretends to hug the professor to attach a tracking device to his collar. The professor leaves without suspecting anything. Tehi tells his subordinates that we need to capture all of them. Then they quickly chase after the professor with the tracking device. They quickly locate the professor's hideout. They see the professor parked at the basement. The team immediately moves in to capture the entire group. Unexpectedly, the fortified room is empty, with no one inside. Only the professor's coat and the tracking device are found. Tehi is extremely surprised. It turns out that a few minutes ago, Seo Yul called to inform the professor that Tehi was tailing him, as their group also had a tracker on her car. Panicked, the professor checks and finds the tracker. This is what turned the situation around against Tehi. Tehi reports the situation to her chief. He is angry that she let the professor escape. As a result, Tehi is temporarily suspended from duty. She's furious but powerless. Everyone looks equally determined to dig the tunnel because time is running out. On the other side, the second group is also digging the tunnel. As they dig fervently, they hear a noise. So both ends are now able to hear each other. They quickly dig through to the other side. The three are jubilant, sowing tears of joy as they're about to escape. The secretary calls Horsetail to come see his father. When he arrives, his father has passed out. He manages to say his final words before departing. People weep in sorrow as another leaves. Tehi, despite being fired, doesn't give up on the case. She studies the city map intently. She deduced the most favorable location where the professor would dig the tunnel. Today is the day of the summit. Many citizens wear the robber's attire and protest. They oppose the summit. All of this unfolds according to the professor's plan. The candidate orders the chief. When the agreement is signed, move in for immediate suppression but not arrests, it's to be a complete slaughter. Afterward, the congressman enters to attend the inter-Korean conference. The professor returns to the hideout at this time, but Tehi is already there with a gun. In this difficult situation, the professor resorts to psychological manipulation tactics. The inter-Korean conference isn't about cooperation. It's just an opportunity to print trillions for officials. Tehi asks how he knows that. The professor responds that he devised this scheme himself. Tehi accuses him of exploiting her from the beginning. He admits that was the initial intention, but he genuinely fell in love with her. Seizing the moment, the professor snatches the gun from Tehi. Then, a gunshot rings out. The professor leads everyone down into the dug tunnel. They quickly emerge on the other side. Everyone embraces the professor warmly. The professor reunites with Dong Su and the members above. Meanwhile, the money has been printed. Everyone is ecstatic and jubilant. The signing ceremony has concluded smoothly. Now, all that's left is to storm the money printing factory and eliminate the robbers. Then, take all the money and leave. The congressman orders an immediate attack on the money printing factory. The police chief orders the rapid response team to mobilize. Inside the factory, everyone is hastily transporting the money. Due to the large amount of money, they have to use boats to move it along the underground river. Above, special forces have already stormed the entrance. Se Young and the hacker are setting up obstacles to hinder the police. 
they barely look up before seeing helicopters hovering above. Immediately after, the police team descends by ropes. Both of them open fire decisively. One of them opens the door for their teammates to advance. They have bulletproof shields that completely overwhelm the robbers. They quickly orders all hostages to hide in the bunker. Now it seems the police want to kill all the robbers and hostages. Above, they are still overwhelmed and unable to lift their heads. Say Young has to resort to using a submachine gun to halt their advance. But at that moment, another group takes a different route. They fire a shot that takes down Say Young. Just in the nick of time, reinforcements arrive to support them. The police are now advancing unstoppably. Seeing the entire group in dire straits, the cross-eyed girl shoots at the ceiling to make the glass fall down. Dong Su continues to fire with the submachine gun. Combining their firepower, Se Young didn't die because she was wearing a bulletproof vest. They keep firing relentlessly towards the police. As the gang possesses heavy weaponry, their firepower causes the police to hesitate and unable to advance. At this moment, Taehee is tied up in the basement, but she manages to break free at last. The police are aggressively deploying tear gas. People hastily evacuate in the chaos. They retreat together into the basement, allowing the police to easily advance inside. One officer, familiar with the place, leads them to the basement he dug out the day before. Here they find hostages dressed as robbers. They now know this is just a decoy bunker. Meanwhile, the gang is descending into the real bunker to escape. Since the bunker is inside the money storage warehouse, the police can't open it. The group reunites deep underground. They need to escape quickly and blow up this place. Tegi has managed to reach a main road by now. She quickly called to report the location of the robber's cellar entrance. The police have arrived here. Tegi arrives at the professor's hideout and then proceeds down the secret tunnel. The gang has left quite far by now. They want to collapse the tunnel, but the bomb doesn't detonate. Furthermore, the police are about to break down the door. Dong Su instructs everyone to run ahead. While he stays back with the submachine gun to block the way, then he pushes the girl forward and stays behind to fire, ready to exhaust all the ammunition. The professor calls for a truck to wait for the money, but the driver notifies him that the police have surrounded the base. The professor is disheartened by this unexpected turn of events. Dong Su say he'll stay behind and accept sacrifice, hoping everyone else can survive. After saying this, Dong Su continuously fires towards the hole. Police found only one person. When Dong Su's gun keeps firing until it runs out of bullets, the police immediately throw a flashbang grenade inside. The loud explosion stuns Dong Su, but when the police advance again, they don't see him. It turns out Se Young arrived just in time to pull him away. The special forces see the bunker and immediately pursue. Seo Yul aims accurately and detonates a bomb to collapse the bunker. The professor thinks his brother has died. He weeps in despair for not considering this possibility. The professor throws his father's drawing into the water. Then he calls the congressman. I'll surrender and return all the money. I just ask for the survival of my team members. As he speaks, Se Young arrives and throws the professor's phone away. In their darkest moment, the professor looks down at the tunnel map drawn by his father. He discovers a secret escape route. His father had anticipated this possibility before he died. He immediately informs everyone of the escape route. His second team is currently planting bombs under the square. This plan must be considered top-notch. Colonel Choi points out ambush spots to catch the robbers for the congressman. The police report finding many bombs under the square. Now they need to evacuate the civilians. Unexpectedly, the congressman refuses to allow civilian evacuation to prevent the robbers from blending into the crowd and escaping. I'd rather see 10,000 people die than lose that money. Even though Taehee cursed her, he still kicked her out. On the square, there are tens of thousands of protesters against the conference, and underneath are hundreds of bombs. The congressman ignored the bomb explosion, which killed the entire protest crowd. Colonel Choi hears the congressman's cruelty and disgusts. He leaves. The special forces assume it's a bomb but have to retreat. Then hundreds of bombs explode, but they're just covers for large airbags. Then from the manhole covers, numerous helium pigs fly up. The entire city is flooded with hundreds of giant red pigs. Just as people are trying to understand what's happening, the pigs explode. Inside them are showers of money raining down. People in the square scramble to collect the money. This is half of the robber's money, deliberately distributed evenly among the protesters against the conference. Taehee feels relieved upon hearing this news. Only the tycoon and the candidate are extremely angry. 
the professor has found a new escape route. Unexpectedly, the professor's father had foreseen this move 20 years ago. Outside, the trucks waiting for the money are also standing by. Tehi knows where the professor is heading. Because he once told her about a tunnel. She asked the colonel to help her escape. They successfully stole a car and left. The professor's gang conveniently loads the money onto the train. Everything is going according to plan so far. Surprisingly, the professor receives a call from Dong Su, revealing that Dong Su and Seo Yul escaped through the manhole covers, mingling with the fleeing crowds and successfully escaping. The professor and his team are overjoyed to hear this. They board the train, but the professor is still uneasy. Se Young asks if the professor is waiting for Tae Hee. She might be coming because she's really good at this. Sure enough, as the professor prepares to board the train, Tae Hee arrives, holding a gun, saying she will arrest him. The professor asks if it's because he exposed the dirty political scheme, or because he deceived her. Then, the professor jumps onto the train. Tehi watches quietly without stopping him. She's emotionally manipulated and in love with him. As the gang heads towards a European country by train, it's the city the professor mentioned before. The media and the police can't find any news from them. But this incident shocks the entire nation. The police investigation reveals that this conference was a hoax, but the presidential candidate easily shifts public opinion. Tehi is investigated for a year on suspicion of involvement with the robbers, but an international lawyer defends her innocence, paid for by a foreign benefactor. Tehi recalls the professor, and she returns home to find the picture of the village the professor promised to take her to. Tehi immediately flies to this location, successfully finding the place as in the picture. Surprisingly, the professor appears. Tehi thought she would live here happily, but the professor says he will continue in part two. The movie ends here. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Bye bye.